Welcome to week two of Psychology 262, Positive Psychology. I'm Carrie Sanderson. I'm your instructor for this course. Today we are going to be talking about different models of well-being. Last week we talked a little bit about exactly what is positive psychology um, and the history of it. And today we're going to look more closely at several models of well-being. You had the opportunity to watch some videos and hear from some experts, Dr. Martin Seligman um, himself, who is considered the founder of positive psychology, Dr. Carol Riff, and an expert from Gallup. So this is what we're going to talk about today. Um, we, as I mentioned last week, I like to start all of um, our gatherings together with some sort of practice of mindfulness. Um, today we're gonna do gratitude, which is kind of a form of mindfulness. And um, we're gonna review a little bit of what we talked about last week, and then we're gonna look at some details of several well-being models. And then finally, a couple of examples so that you can see um, some validated positive psychology interventions um, that are around some of these well-being components. But to start with, I want to say thank you. Thank you for being a part of this class. It's really exciting for me to be able to share um, what I've learned about positive psychology, how to apply it both in my personal life and in my work life to really be transformational and so it's a really big deal for all of us to be together and get to learn together i know that the field is new and there's always great stuff happening and I'm, i know i'm going to get to learn from you as well so really thank you for being here um my second piece of gratitude is to honor and acknowledge some of the positive psychology greats that we lost in 2021. Sadly, four just luminaries in the field passed away. Um, Ed Diener is kind of considered the father of happiness psychology. So, and happiness research will be um, taking a look at the subjective well being assessment, and, and that was created by Dr. Diener. Um, Dr. Albert Bandura passed away this year. He's well known for a number of really important research and, and theories in psychology, but self-efficacy is a piece that plays a big role in positive psychology. Um, Dr. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, kind of the co-founder of positive psychology. He was the co-author of the article you read last week, Introducing Positive Psychology. He's also really well known for his research around flow. And we'll talk about that a little bit in terms of engagement. Dr. Seligman talked about that as well. And Dr. Aaron Beck who was the developer and the researcher um, around cognitive behavioral therapy, so CBT. Um, some of you may be familiar with that, but we'll, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So honoring these four gentlemen. And then sadly, just this past weekend in January, 2022, um, we lost Thich Nhat Hanh, who is a Buddhist monk who played a part, he was 95 years old when he passed away, has um, had a profound influence in terms of mindfulness and living a peaceful life. You might recognize this meditation from last week, it's my favorite, and you will definitely see it again. Um, that was a creation of Thich Nhat Hanh. So just really quickly, um, let's take a few deep breaths and have a moment of silence. All right, so to um, reconnect with some of what we talked about last week, you saw a video this week from Dr. Seligman, so you got to hear from him um, about the PERMA model that he created. 
But just to remind you, um, his his commitment to well-being for all and for well-being to be taught in schools, very, very important positive education and really specifically in community colleges. So he really stands um, for all that, that we're learning and all that we're trying to do. Dr. Seligman talked about Dr. Duckworth and her work with GRIT. And again, just to reconnect some threads for us, um, her, her assertion that well-being is universally important and it's really important for us to teach these in colleges and community colleges to holistically take care of the student and enable you to learn the skills um, of well-being so that you can use those in your individual lives but also in your community to make an impact. I wanted to refer to um, a study by, or I, actually it's his doctoral dissertation, which um, includes several big studies that, that Dr. Adler did um, in his research on positive education, just the, to ultimately show that teaching well-being increases academic performance. So the combination of well-being skills and academic skills creates not only well-being for the student but also increases academic achievement so if anyone is um, interested in positive education that's a great a great research paper to read and then finally hopefully an expert that most of you will recognize dr gonzalez who's our interim chandler uh, um, chancellor of the Maricopa Community Colleges and his um, valuing of well-being for both employees and students and the important impact that it had in kind of helping us respond quickly to COVID and um, you know face some of those challenges. And to revisit exactly what positive psychology is, it includes all of these really, really, really interesting topics. And I wish that we could talk about them all at once, but we're, um, we're going to go through and you're going to hear, you've heard, and we'll hear a little bit more about the components of PERMA and some of the other well-being models that are almost, they're all included in, in some of these pieces, which we'll get to and we'll talk to talk about in much more detail as we go through the course. Um, but just to remind you, positive psychology is uh, the science of a life well lived and aims to understand research and cultivate human flourishing. And in doing so, taking a look at exactly what is well-being so the science of well-being it would be helpful to know <laughs> helpful to define exactly what well-being is and it's kind of one of those things that you know it when you feel it but sometimes it's kind of hard to come up with the words to really define it and describe it so let's start with the cdc's definition of well-being um, at a minimum, well-being includes the presence of positive emotions and the absence of negative emotions. So that's really what positive psychology is about when we talked about what it is. It's that focus on cultivating um, well-being, well-being, cultivating positive states. And um, it's kind of that, that moving from that place of absence of negative emotions. It also includes satisfaction with life, fulfillment, and positive functioning. So in simple terms, it can be described as judging life positively and feeling good. So that's an interesting definition because one of the things we think about when we're looking at well-being, how do we cultivate it, you know, where does it come from, when we talk about what it is, we need to think about is it our well-being in the moment so is it the state that we're in right now or is it a measure of a longer term well-being so kind of looking out over our lives and finding life satisfaction 
So you heard um, Carol Riff talk a little bit about eudaimonic well-being. Well-being itself, and particularly from this definition of judging life positively and feeling good, that includes both. So hedonic well-being being more about happiness and the presence of positive affect. So you're feeling pleasant or you're experiencing pleasure in some way, such as, you know, food, drink, and maybe rock and roll and the absence of negative affect. So really kind of striving towards feeling good in the present moment and the the sources of that those positive feelings tend to come from external resource external sources or resources and it does tend to be fleeting so it's not long lasting and in fact there's um, a concept called the the hedonic treadmill which is the fact that we kind of don't really know um what makes us happy in the long term we're not really very good at defining that and we kind of sometimes struggle with figuring out really what matters and we're we're tending to look at the shorter term goals or immediate gratification and when we get those things they don't last very long so you're always kind of striving to to get that next sort of fix of happiness and that's that concept of the treadmill um it's kind of a never-ending search when you look at eudaimonic well-being, that's more about looking longer term and bigger picture at the meaning of your life. So finding fulfillment and life satisfaction, feeling like um, even though sometimes some of the some of what you're doing can be hard, that what you're doing is meaningful and you're making an impact. It's about your potential and your ability to grow. So thinking about your personal growth and um, achieving authenticity and, and the best self that you can be. And those tend to be internal resources. So well-being really is a combination of both of these things. And we'll take a look as we go through the course at how we support each other. So you heard lots um, about the model of PERMA well-being, so positive emotion engagement, relationships, meaning, and accomplishment, um, which this model was developed in around 2011, 2012, you know, has continuously been researched, but it has become apparent, particularly through the pandemic, that there might be a component that's missing, and that's the H. So health, you know, moving, sleeping, eating well, all the things you need to do to take care of yourself physically that actually kind of through that mind body connection impact you psychologically. So now there are a number of researchers that are um, advocates of the PERMA with an H model. EPOC is um, a model of well being that is geared towards adolescence which are ages 10 to 18 ish um, it's actually based on the perma model but it's been adjusted to be developmentally appropriate for that age range that's a that's a time of um increased development and kind of finding yourself and who you are and, and becoming your own person and making decisions that are going to impact the rest of your life and so it's been, PERM has been tweaked just a little bit to focus more on what's important to that age group and what impacts their well-being the most. So engagement, perseverance, which is that ability to really stick with things. Optimism, the ability to see and believe in good things in your future. Connectedness is, is huge. Um, particularly for teenagers and then that kind of happiness that daily happiness and discovering what contributes to that um, for you in that in that age um, you heard a little bit from dr. riff and she talked about eudaimonic well-being and this model um, which it, again is is widely accepted widely used widely researched 
is based specifically on eudaimonic well-being so that kind of longer term these are not things that happen <laughs> in the short term that happen kind of today in your life you self-accepted um, these are things that we're we're working on and we're interacting with and we're thinking about um, building through our entire lives so self-acceptance this is something a lot of us have to work on um, personal growth so really coming into your own finding your purpose in life that aligns with everything that's important to you and and the contribution that you can make in the world positive relations um, you'll see that's most common through all of the well-being models environmental mastery so kind of your ability to navigate your world and then finally autonomy which is your ability to make your own decisions to kind of function as an individual the last model of well-being that we're going to talk about today um, you saw a really interesting TED talk by one of the, the Gallup researchers. Gallup is, a, is an old and very, very large company that's a polling company. So during an election time, you'll always see the Gallup polls. Um, they really kind of started as an information gathering organization. But with the, the huge amount of data that they've been able to collect over decades of time, They've actually been able to develop um, their own well-being model. Don Clifton, who's one of the founders of Gallup, was a really early proponent of positive psychology. And the organization has a huge research arm. They're um, based in Omaha, Nebraska, and there they have the University of Nebraska at Omaha kind of has houses a lot of this research and so in in looking at all of this information over time Gallup has identified the five essential elements of well-being as purpose which is kind of considered a part of your career associated with your career path um, social financial community and physical so they were actually the first to kind of identify that physical component as being really really critical and have since developed the gallup national health and well-being index so based on all of this research they've come up with questions to survey people about their well-being and do they through these questions do they consider themselves to be thriving to be struggling or sometimes to both that's been really common through the pandemic is that we're kind of kind of okay and kind of not and so um research has been showing that thriving and struggling can actually coexist so i um, put a link in for you to take a look at the most recent findings of this index of this survey um which was released at the end of 2021 and as you can imagine <laughs> thriving numbers have decreased and for lots of really interesting reasons I and mean, we can we can name the big reasons but then it's kind of broken down into different demographic groups and who is impacted by what so it's an interesting way to take these models this model um, applies to us as individuals but also how to take a look at all of the the data from all these individuals together and learn some important things around community well-being so let's take a look um, just at a, at a few positive intervention so all of these have been validated and you know research has shown that they they do have a positive impact on our well-being um, around positive emotion so we'll do a whole module on positive emotion um, to get into that a little bit more but one of the daily practices um, you know kind of hopefully that can become a part of the way that you think is savoring and that's the ability to really be present in the moment when something amazing is happening and pay attention and describe it to yourself and and um, enable the experience to be elongated so you can enjoy it more 
Um, people have a tendency to sort of fall into three, one of three categories or maybe one or more of pre-savoring is when you're planning something and you're savoring all of that. So thinking about planning a trip and how amazing it's going to be and that can be a really positive experience. Being able to be in the moment and experience the positive emotion of the trip, you know, be, ha making really clear memories and, and positive associations. And then post, those are the people that are kind of bossing you around to take pictures and may or may not be paying attention to what's actually happening in the moment. But later when they look at the pictures, they're savoring then. So think about where you might fall into that. Um, but to do this activity, think of three things that create positive emotions for you and then combine those into one super intervention. So think about your senses and how you can bring together um, three or more positive experiences into one experience and then how can you savor that going forward. Um, three good things can be associated with positive emotions or it can be and or probably both um, gratitude. So this can also be a gratitude practice that helps you become really aware of the positive things that go on around you and appreciating them. So every night for one week, write down three things that went well each day and why you think they went well. So this, um, to take a look at meaning and an activity that you can do around meaning, this is the purpose for learning statement. I think this is really important for college students when you're in college to know why you're there and be able to remind yourself of that. Sometimes when you're taking a class that maybe seems like, you know, why am I taking this? This doesn't have anything to do with what I want to do. It always does in some way. And so if you can articulate why you're there, why this is meaningful to you, then it helps you um, kind of align the work that you're doing when it gets a little bit challenging. You're able to get through that. It helps make you a little bit more resilient. So you will want to complete the following statement. I will become a, and think about the career aspirations that you have being kind of as specific as possible. So I will become a structural engineer using my signature strengths of, and fill in what your signature strengths are um, for an engineer. Let's say my signature strengths are love and perspective and um, judgment, which is critical thinking. And so I can use all of those things to make people's lives better by building bridges that connect our communities. So having that really specific image of, of the difference that you're going to make um, can, can really help you focus and get through and really kind of savor the, the um, anticipation of getting to that place. The last one I want to share is um, about accomplishment, and this is called the you at your best writing reflection. This is a little bit similar to the positive introduction that we did, but this is to write about, and this is um, a little bit more detailed and a little bit more specific, write about a time when you were at your very best and you accomplished an important goal. So what unique strengths contributed. So this is enabling you again to connect your signature strengths to your accomplishment of this goal. So we're going to we're going to do a module on character strengths. So we'll learn all about that. Um, why was this goal important to you? So how did it align with your personal values? Did you face any challenges and how did you get through those? How did you show resiliency? How did you use your strengths? to stay motivated. And then when you accomplish the goal, how did you celebrate it? You know, how did you really savor that moment of accomplishing the goal? And so you write this story, um, write your story of, of this goal accomplishment and then reflect on it, read it every day for a week and kind of reflect on your strengths and um, your accomplishment. And it can help you kind of practice for future goals. So it'll 
build hope and optimism in you and help you um, kind of move forward. So I don't want you to do any of those specific interventions this week. We'll probably do them in future modules. Um, but this week you'll be taking some assessments because uh, about measuring, um, we're kind of figuring out what well-being is, but how do we measure that? What does research and measurement look like in positive psychology? And so we're going to do um, some assessments so you'll have the experience of taking some of those surveys and those questionnaires and get a feel for the questions that are asked to get to bigger concepts. And um, I think you'll find as we go through this course, one of the things I often reflect on is it see none of none of the components that really work are surprising to us. I think for most of us, we're not surprised that um, it's a positive thing to feel positive emotions. We're not surprised that our relationships are really, really important, that it's important to do things to contribute to other people. But the and the and it's a it's a well researched, rigorously documented, researched, empirically validated field. But the actual interventions and practices that come out of it are really pretty simple. And so a gratitude practice, a meditation, a reflection on your purpose. All of these things are very simple and not really very hard to incorporate into your everyday life, but they fit, they build such an incredibly strong foundation for your well-being going forward and your ability to bring it to people around you. So that's it for this week. Um, always love to hear from you if you have questions or ideas and I'll outline all the assignments and a little bit of reading um, for this week in Canvas.